Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and we are gonna roll on with part 3 of Zongli Street and guess what, it's gotta be fire. There's more and more uh, fight sequences so it's gonna be really really exciting. So guys, grab a snack, sit back and enjoy. Let's go. I'm gonna make it as a 4 part series because even after, well obviously 2 videos, the chapter is still uh, almost 1 hour more. Indeed. So this is please do stay tuned for the part 4 of this video and turn on your post notifications so that you guys get notified every time I leave a new video and on with the chapter. An adeptus. Hmm. That's suspicious. But if you don't want to talk about it, we won't pry. Oh, yes. That old granny asked us to tell you something. If you have the time, you can come over for tea. I don't She didn't have to do the her, accent, but, but yeah, you she's can cute. Always count on an old lady for a pot of tea. <laughs> that tone does not suit you. Still, her teapot is indeed very good. There are none better for brewing tea. When a suitable time arrives, I'll bring a spot of fine tea and pay her a visit. So what's the next step in our preparations? Hmm. Next, we need to purchase kites. Ooh, Paimon loves kites! Are you taking us kite flying? Is this our break time? Oh, can she be more <laughs> no, cute, no. guys? Kites are children's toys, yes. But they also play various symbolic roles in Liyue's rituals. I will explain it to you. But our next course of action should probably be to purchase the kites first. Oh, sure. Curiouser and curiouser. Sir, you're here. The seven kites you asked for have been made to order. Would you like to take them now? Yes, thank you. It's rare to see customers who want to buy this type of kite nowadays. In the early days, we used to get orders from people of all walks of life. Well, this is Mr. Zhang Li from the Longsheng Funeral Parlor, so he's probably well versed in all these walks of life. We've talked about a whole bunch of things while traveling with him. He seems to know Liyue's favorite topics, money and government, really well, but he likes talking about less useful topics instead. Well, that's because I prefer to share fun things with you. <laughs> Children's toys are very fun things, that's for sure. I enjoy watching the children at play as much as anyone else. But there is more to it than that. Finely crafted toys are well loved by children, but this craft itself has been honed over thousands of years, and there is meaning behind that. I have made kites in Liyue for 40 years, and I am intimately familiar with the forms passed down from my ancestors. The meaning of these seven kites is far from banal. Indeed. These are decorations used in the rite of parting. The seven kites represent the seven. I took the liberty of coloring outside the lines when doing the insignia of the Animo Archon. As for the kite that honors the Geo Archon, one must follow the contract given right down to the last letter. These patterns are ancient and you can also find them in the Golden House. Ah, Paimon's heard that name before! Huh? The design of this kite displays a firm grasp on the cyclicality and eternity so dear to the Electro Archon. 
These markings of tree and leaf pay due honor to wisdom and the passage of time. All this on a single kite. Truly astonishing. Justice flows across the surface of the waters. War rages like a flame. As does that which the Cryo Archon once. <sighs> yes. These details are masterfully done. <laughs> the compliments of a learned man truly are pleasant. Well then, Granny Shen, I shall take these back with me. Oh no, As not again. Pigs. Well, allow me. Hey, it's Child! <laughs> no, I was merely passing through. I see Mr. Zhang Li's the same as ever. When paying, well, when getting others to pay for him, he neither looks at the price tag nor his wallet. He knows a great deal about money, and about the trials of the common man. He just doesn't consider poverty to be something that could ever happen to him. Or perhaps, you could say that he cannot imagine himself lacking money. How has he not died of hunger yet? Child, you are as fond of jokes as ever. Well then, since we've purchased our kites without incident, there's no need to take a break before moving to the next step in our preparations. The rite of parting requires helping hands as well as materials. We should be able to find some people near the harbor. Oh, by the way, take this bag of money. You probably won't want to let Zhang Li do the bargaining, if you know what I mean. Hmm, seems I missed out on some interesting information. I suppose I'll just have to find a more opportune moment next time. I am seriously excited to fight this guy, being one of the uh, weakest harbingers, so yeah. I meant more like um, consider the weak, because I know that harbingers are really hard to fight, so yeah. Hiring help? Sure. But let me just say first that I'm a reserve member of the Adventurer's Guild. I take adventuring commissions, but I don't do anything clerical. Adventure? Venturing into the mountains to capture a few crystal flies seems adventurous enough. Eh? That's not hard. Almost a bit too easy for a reserve adventurer. Nah, never mind. I'll only charge you 15,000, Mora. What say you? A most fair price. Excuse me for five butterfly. How about we give him somewhere around five thousand? I mean, that's reasonable, right? That won't do, I'm afraid. It's too little. Too little, I say. Okay, this might be a bad bet, but I'm going with 6,500. That won't do, I'm afraid. It's too little. Too little, I say. Five Geo Crystal Flies. Yes, I do think it's worth about this much. I'll do it. Maybe I should have reduced it to 10k. I gave him 11 or something. A full day of odd jobs at Yujing Terrace. Hmm. No problem. 25,000 per day. A fair trade, A yes. true price, but we are gonna save. Whoa, that's expensive. Um, could you give us a bit of a discount on account of the whole Hero of Mondstadt thing? Pretty sure he's gonna go who? Hero of yeah. Mondstadt? Never heard of them. Well, you may never have heard of this hero, but it seems you've heard of Mora nonetheless. Thus, I will simply pay the whole sum. So, for this, I think we should go for like 15 or 13 or something. Maybe, I don't know. We'll go with 13, I guess.
This is too little. I'd consider it if it was a bit higher. Okay, too little, so we'll go for probably 16 or 17, something. I don't know. Let's see, let's see, let's see. This price will do. No loss to me for a day's work. So that's about 20 in our bag remaining. So basically, I think we'll have enough and more for the last worker. So yeah, let's Adventure see. Time. Oh, help? Sure. I, Tick, always put in 100% effort into everything I do. Of course, they'll... So what's the job? Let me see. We are still missing some wooden implements over at Yujing Terrace. They aren't uncommon objects, so I didn't make any special preparations for them. No problem. That'll be 20,000 mora for a single trip. How does that sound? Done. I just want to go, like, you know, I just want to save just to see, like, if we can or should we, like, have to settle it on 20. So let's see, let's see, let's see if we can like uh, settle it for uh, 10,000. We'll see. Yeah, his mood is almost oh, to the on. fifth. That's too so little. I don't think like even though we have a few tries, it's I think it's still okay. So 10,000 got rejected. So I think we're gonna go with 15,000. So let's try that. Okay, I'm gonna reduce one zero and let's go. Let me think. Deal. So as we guess, it is, is negotiable. So I'll hop right to it. That's the dubs. Bruh. Adventure time. Uh, off we go. Adventure time. All finished then? Splendid. Any leftover cash is yours to keep. A favor for the Fatui should never go unrewarded. You think you can buy us off with some loose change? No way! Paimon demands to know when the next payment is coming! <laughs> Traveler got her hands on her head. <laughs> well, how does this sound? You give me the information I need, and maybe I'll leave the Northland Bank's vaults open and unattended for half an hour. Does that mean you know what he's after? Yikes! You're right! Signora! <laughs> you both need to calm down. I don't know what's gotten into you. Just what is this about? The atmosphere got so tense all of a sudden. Next, we need some everlasting incense. For this, we need to go to Boo Boo Pharmacy, the finest pharmacy in all of... Is... everything okay? Everything is fine. I was just informing them that they need not return the surplus mora. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must be going. Boo Boo Pharmacy. Huh? D did you hear that? Where did it come from? That voice itself was spooky. The reception, it seems. How about you go check it out and Paimon will bring up the rear? Oh, 
Oh, that's Chi Chi. Okay. Oh, there you are. But you can't even reach the counter. You guys already know which option I'm gonna take. Joke's on you. Paimon floats. So height is no restriction. Anyway, there's something weird about this one over here. What's the talisman doing on her forehead? It can't be. She's... a zombie? Welcome to Boo Boo Pharmacy. I am Chi Chi. Once upon a time, Chi Chi died. Then, Chi Chi was saved by... the Adepti. Now... Chi Chi is a zombie. Something like this would be unimaginable in Mondstadt. Uh, hello, little girl. Do you sell everlasting incense here? Excuse me, sir. Did you bring your prescription? I. Surely no prescription is needed to purchase everlasting incense. It's not a controlled substance. Chi-Chi can get your medicine. But only if you show Chi-Chi your prescription. These are Chi-Chi's orders from Chi-Chi. Zombies are limited to acting within the confines of their orders. And somehow in this case, the zombie issues her own orders to herself. My dear Chi-Chi, we didn't bring a prescription, I'm afraid. But we do hope that you can still help us find some everlasting incense. Okay, then. How did you manage that? But Chi-Chi helps you. You help Chi-Chi. Only fair. Since when do customers need to do favors for customer service staff? Never mind. Just think of it as a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. That way, everybody wins. Sometimes in Liyue, the art of the deal is simply about victory via mental gymnastics. Go to Mount Tianhong, find the Guizhong Ballista, and hunt a cocoa goat. Please and thank you. Hmm. Guizhong Ballista. I have heard of this device before. It's a kind of crossbow turret, installed on Mount Chinhung by an adeptus in the distant past. An early mechanical device. Located in Chinhung Pass, it was designed to automatically fire at large monsters, protecting Liyue from external threats. Mr. Zhang Li really knows Liyue inside out! Apparently not quite. This is the first I have ever heard of the Coco Goat. The Coco Goat is a legendary animal. An adept beast. Did you want to add anything else, or...? No. Just that the Coco Goat is a legendary animal. An adept beast. What it looks like... Don't know. Where to find it? Don't know either. Where it came from? Also don't know. Very well then. Let's start by investigating near the Guizhong Ballista. Perhaps we will find some clues. <sighs> what the heck is a coca goat? Currently inoperable in any case. This device is broken. Ah, uh, what? It broke? After millennia of wear and tear, even Adepti contraptions are difficult to maintain. So what are we gonna do? Quick, Mr. 
Zhongli, use your unlimited high society knowledge powers! Hmm... You almost make it sound like I'm some sort of bourgeois parasite whose only utility lies in providing quaint pieces of trivia on demand. That said, let me think for a moment. Ah, yes. Spare parts were made for the Guizhong Ballista when it was first built, in case it was damaged in battle. As I recall, there is a military supply post from that period somewhere inside the pass. If we can retrieve the spare parts from where they are stored, we may be able to repair the Guizhong Ballista. One just needs to understand the basic working principles of the device. So... What you're saying is that you actually understand the working principles? I have a smattering of knowledge on the topic. With the parts in hand, I could at least tinker with it. Post. Here, post. Ah. These parts look useful. One moment. I will try to repair the device. It is done. The Guizhong Ballista is more intricately designed than I thought. Ooh! Now how do we turn it on? It's easy enough. We simply need to do this. Look. Well, are we gonna shoot scope. this thing manually? Oh, that would be fire. I don't think so. I don't think so. And over there, more nothing. Hey, just what do you think you're doing? So you fixed up this turret because you're planning to do what exactly? Not a turret, a Guizhong ballista. Also, kindly state your name before you ask a question. It's just good manners. Ha! <laughs> Are you blind or something? You're looking at the leader of the treasure hoarders, old man. This area is supposed to be chock full of hidden treasures, but you can't get anywhere near them with this thing keeping watch. <laughs> it might look like any other mechanical device, but trust me, it's got a mind of its own. Last time we approached the mountain, it nearly skewered one of our guys. A few of us risked our lives to disarm it, which amazingly we managed. And then we turn our backs for two seconds, and you've already gone and repaired it! The next thing you'll be repairing is your faces! And that's if you get out of this alive! Tut tut. Vandalizing the legacy of an adeptus for selfish gain. Disgraceful behavior. It is not we who need reprimanding, but you. Frostbite! Off we go! Come a little closer. Blitz! Surrender and I'll be gentle. Don't be such a brute! Get out of here! Take cover! Ow! Bruh. This is just my... Ugh. There's no end to this. Da! 
dodge this! Oh, so sorry. But I cannot see I'm legally blind. for a little shock. Didn't know 
the so-called adeptus made cross booted into Troubling the ourselves over this rabble is know. not worth the time. We should focus on our contract with Chi Chi. Working, but where's our coca goat? A search using the Guizhong Ballista revealed no significant life forms nearby, save for the usual wildlife. What's more, a contraption built using Adeptus technology should have no trouble detecting an Adepta beast, as Chi Chi put it. <sighs> Which means. Paimon wouldn't go that far. We did something positive, right? <sighs> we won't solve anything while standing here and racking our brains. Let's return to Boo Boo Pharmacy, explain that we could not find a Coco Goat, and review our next step. Good idea. We did our best, and that's what counts. What's the hurry? Forgive us. We were unable to fulfill our end of the contract. We found no trace of the Coco Goat Adepta Beast of which you speak. <sighs> what a disappointment. Don't worry about it. But I feel very disappointed. Aw, poor Chi Chi. Why does Paimon feel so guilty all of a sudden? Coco goat milk is tasty. So tasty. Much better than normal goat milk. Only an Adepta Beast could make such tasty milk. I'm sorry. I have a poor memory. I cannot remember the name of the milk. That's why I wrote it down. Where did I put it? Ah, here. This is the name. Coconut milk. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? Huh? <sighs> I owe you both an apology. I hastily agreed to what appeared to be an equitable agreement with this zombie child when perhaps I should have undertaken further due diligence. Never mind, Zhongli. You didn't know. As the Leeway proverb goes, all things are random and... Um... So how are you supposed to predict anything? Literally no one could have seen this coming. Why does all of a sudden Paimon is trying to flexing with the words in front of Zhongli? I don't know. of shattering this poor kiddo's world to you. No. Im impossible. Seems Chi-Chi took this pretty hard. <laughs> Someone learnt a valuable life lesson today, then. Thank you all for looking after my little Chi-Chi. Might I ask who? Ah, oh, how rude of me. I'm Baiju, boss of the Boo Boo Pharmacy. I meant that Chi-Chi was the boss. Turns out it's some wacko who wears medicinal ingredients around his neck. What a sorry state of affairs. This little mascot is even more of a simpleton than Chi-Chi. Ah, the medicine, the snake is speaking! I prefer to stay silent, but faced with strangers, I must speak, lest you mistake me for an escapee from the medicine cabinet, for I am a living, breathing serpent! <laughs> Don't mind Chung Sheng. She's a good girl, really. As for you three, Communal chaos causing with Chi-Chi aside, what business brings you here? 
Do you sell everlasting incense in this fine establishment? Everlasting incense? Why, of course we do. Phew, at last. Things are finally starting to come together. Three million mora. Top quality. Guaranteed. You might as well just rob the Golden House. Oh, but the chasing have taken it over for now. Security will be tighter than usual. Hmm. Three million. An innocuous number in and of itself. Though practically speaking, it could be a hard sum to come by. It's a crazy number. We'd never be able to make that much more. And as for Mr. Zhang Li, he's around three million short. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! What are we gonna do? Is this the part where we go crawling back to child? <laughs> Coco Goat! Coco Goat! <laughs> my sides hurt! Oh my goodness! I cannot believe you fell for that! Less laughter, more sympathy! I'm almost in tears over here. Uh, thank you. That was the best laugh I've had in a long time. In return, I'm more than happy to sort out this mess you've managed to get yourselves into. Excuse me, sir. Dr. Baiju, isn't it? Truly honored. I'm Child, one of the Fatui Harbingers. Forgive my audacity, but I see a great many opportunities for us to collaborate in the future. If Boo Boo Pharmacy needed a stable supply of, say, coconut milk, the Fatui could help by setting up a robust and speedy distribution network. Strange. I knew the Fatui infiltrated businesses with seductive deals, but so much fuss over coconut milk? Coconut milk. Baiju, quick. Chi-Chi wants coconut milk. Ah, yes, of course, Chi-Chi. Anything you want. Thank you, child. I look forward to a successful collaboration in the future. I can give you a discount on that everlasting incense, too. Let's say 2,990,000 mora. That's like zero difference from 3 million! Hmm... 2,990,000. Also an innocuous number in and of itself, though practically speaking. Well, now that this is settled, we must head back to Yujing Terrace. Mr. Child, Dr. Baiju, little Miss Chi Chi, see you soon. Ah, that lot is an absolute riot. Honestly, I can't remember the last time I laughed so hard. So, you've been eavesdropping, I hope. What have I missed? Yes, Master Child. They spoke of the Qixing taking the Golden House. Well, well, well. Mingguang and her Qixing cronies. What else would they be hiding in the Golden House, if not the Exuvia? I apologize, but I warned you, didn't I? As the old Leo is saying goes, the walls have ears. So guys, I am like 40 minutes into recording this part of the video. So I'm pretty sure by the next part, uh, we'll be completing this chapter. And if you guys made so far into the video, I do appreciate you. Uh, I mean, I do appreciate your guys support. Like, share and subscribe to my channel and I'll get you guys. Gatch? What the heck is Gatch? Uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one, guys. Right again, we out. Let's go. Do want to apologize to you guys for not uploading this video sooner. I've been a bit busy with college, and What's I hope hurry? you guys understand. Uh, we'll be back with more fun content soon. Uh, so, without further ado, bye, guys. Let's go. What's the hurry?